won't see the golden of the sun when I'm gone. Wait, no. I won't breathe the brace and air when I'm gone. And I can't even worry about my cares when I'm gone. I won't be asked to do my share when I'm gone. So I guess I'll have to do it when I'm gone. Running from the rain when I'm gone. I can't even suffer from my pain when I'm gone. Can't say who's to praise or who's to blame when I'm gone. So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here. My days will be dances of delight when I'm gone. And I can't question how who or how or who is wrong or right when I'm gone. Can't add my name into the fight when I'm gone. So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here. And I won't be laughing at the lies when I'm gone. Can't question how or when or why when I'm proud enough to die when I'm gone so I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here well there's no place in this world where I'll belong when I'm gone I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone. You won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone. So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here. Where are your legs that used to run? Haru, Haru, where 
are your legs that used to run before you went to carry a gun? I fear your dancing days are done, Johnny, I hardly knew you. You haven't an arm, you haven't a leg, Haroo, Haroo. You haven't an arm, you haven't a leg, Haroo, Haroo. You haven't an arm, you haven't a leg, you're an eyeless, boneless, chickenless egg. You'll have to be put with a bowl to beg, Johnny, I hardly knew you. But Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah. When Johnny comes marching home again, hurrah, hooray! Well, the men will sing and the boys will shout, and the ladies, they will all come out. Yeah, right. And we'll all be gay when Johnny comes marching home. And it still goes on. What the heck? Do we just never be home? I guess not. If you can stand another along that pain, this is another, this is another one of my favorites. I heard this at the Kent Folk Festival many years back. But it's, we had revolutions. Or, um, there were always the troubles going on in Ireland. Stood up. And everywhere there's always these little pockets of rebellion and then something grows and then it pivots out. But we never seem to get past this certain point and we keep regressing and then starting over again. But this could apply anytime. However, it was about the Irish. We knew we'd face the power that comes from money. When we marched against the empire's mighty schemes, they were armed with special powers and legislation. While we were armed with youth and foolish dreams, but it seemed so right and very old that summer. Oh, when we took them on and built our barricade. We were an army dressed in faded jeans and sand. We're too young and full of pride to be afraid. And we believed in things like justice, truth, and freedom. We believed we had the right to Build a new tomorrow. You are fast, young Peter Pan. But we soon learn the truth of street rebellion as our cities crumble around the stone by stone. We were betrayed by those who promised they would help us. Against tanks and troops and guns, we stood alone. And soon no one spoke justice, truth, or freedom. And soon no one gave one damn for liberty. And all we hoped was that we might go on surviving. Young Peter Pan. Well, the Empire dealt us death and fear and prison. There's no mercy from that military machine. And our sweet youth swapped their faded jeans and sandals. For hoods and guns with loaded magazines. And now the years have run their cruel retribution. And our brothers and our sisters bear the pain. As both 
sides try for vital and solution. And the politicians play their deadly game. And among the dead lie justice, truth, and freedom. And among the dead lie hope and liberty.
Chip, chip, chip. Harvey. Hello, 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 hello. Yo, Nukes, everybody. Hi there, how are you? We are here at the solar stage. Folks in the back, if you'll sit down, please. We're going to have a great presentation from Vina Kali and Terry Smith. They are from a press. Uh, who, they're uh, surrounding uh, the uh, Portsmouth and Richmond facility, a couple hours south of here. One of the most notorious radioactive industrial facilities in the world. They have, it has been used to enrich uranium. Uh, thankfully, the nuclear industry is on its way. They're trying to make a relapse. We call it the nuclear relapse. They call it a renaissance. We call it the relapse. But um, uh, Terry and Vina are two of the nation's great activists. Vina has been at it for 20 years or more. Terry, of course, is only 19, so she hasn't been at it that long. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, they are uh, uh, they are tremendously effective, powerful, articulate activists. Vina worked at the facility, has uh, tremendously uh, difficult and important stories to tell. These two folks have made a tremendous impact on, uh, on the environment here in Ohio, and on the situation worldwide with nuclear power. This is a very important facility that we need to keep shut. And they are right in the forefront of doing just that. So we owe them a great deal of thanks, and they have a tremendous amount of information that's extremely important to share with us. So if you give them your undivided attention, you'll come out of here with something really important and worthwhile, and we need your help to keep this goddamn plant shut, and uh, they're going to tell you how to do it. So thank you very much. And here's Vina. Uh, 
it was called, I think it was West Valley, New York was the name of the plant. And that plant thought they were taking care of uranium, but they were extracting plutonium and didn't know it. And they sent it to Franklin. Also, we got it, reactor tails from uh, Paducah and Hanford and Savannah River. And when the story broke, it helped bring in the compensation bill, which is called the Energy Employees Compensation Act, which is not a really good bill, but it is there, and it did get some workers paid their cancer. And the rest of us have still been fighting it for eight years. My records have been locked up twice. I had to get them unlocked. One of my caseworkers who okayed all my illnesses got fired. Um, I'm going through more caseworkers. I don't only have to fight the Department of Labor. I'm fighting the, uh, the state of Ohio with state workers' compensation. Even though they admitted that I had toxic chemical and radiation exposures, they tried to hide my radiation exposures. So I've been doing this without any money. Um, I've refinanced my home three times. I've never been too far to talk when I go wherever I have to go to talk. And today on that stage, I was I was really nervous up on top that big stage. I've never been on a big stage. But um, we're, we're converting this depleted uranium. Uh, they got a conversion plant. And there's going to be a lot of waste. They used to store waste in the buildings that we were working in. All of our drains and all of our uh, clothes that are washed, that are contaminated, they all go to this little pipe right here. This pipe right here goes into the Cider River, which goes into the Higher River. All of their cooling towers, the chromium, the hexavalent chromium, the fluoride. We release fluorides at the plant. Uh, that double the standards in Oak Ridge and uh, Paducah, but Ohio doesn't have a standard for fluorides, and we double the standards here in Ohio. So somebody needs to get on our legislators and do something about this fluoride. Also, in 1957, the state of Ohio Health Department knew that workers were dying. 1957, five workers from the plant were sent to five different hospitals dying of five different illnesses. But yet, the state of Ohio and the health department turned their backs. They still turn their backs on the, the community of Haifa. This is Owen Thompson, uh, we, and this is Mike Talba, and Owen and myself, and we broke the story, listened to our story. It's been hard to get stories out, the media don't want to print the story. We have the highest rate of cancer, in the nation in Scioto County. 60% of the workers live in Scioto County. Um, all, there's been so many releases I couldn't even, I can't even sit here and tell you. When I was working in the buildings, there was releases every day. In, in, in 85, I was in three releases in one day and I wasn't told. Um, I've been really sick and a lot of people tell me they say, you don't look sick. And I say, well, I don't get up every morning and try to look sick. But I am sick of the nuclear plant, and I don't have to look sick to be sick of that plant. But I've had uh, seven tumors, a total hysterectomy. I have neuropathy. I have some type of memory uh, dysfunction. Um, I have an immune system deficiency that I had to take gamma glomus. This is the community kids here on this one. This little boy named Ross, he had 15 tumors inside of him. He was 11 years old. They, they missed five of the tumors and he finally died of cancer. This little boy, Jamie, he was born with this on his leg and they took it off and he also had an operable brain tumor. It's just such a horrible story. You know, I just can't tell you much. I just I want to cry every time I listen to them. People call me all the time and they're sick and they want to know what they, I can do for them. I can help myself, but I try to tell them what I'm doing and maybe they can do something even better. Um, this is just a couple of stories here and you can go to every home in Pike County. Once ATSDR came in, they had a, they had a, Oh, Agency for Toxic Substance and the Disease Registry. I forgot those acronyms. They came in to do a study because the people of Pike County didn't want them to come. Well, they looked at a couple of uh, illnesses and they declared that Pike County citizens didn't have any problems. And we had a paper 
300 people come to that meeting and over 600 or over 260 some people signed that they had miscarriages and, and cancer and tumors and knots and bloody noses. But ATSDR found one thing that they looked at. And then the community residents have filed a lawsuit within the six mile air radius of that plant, which is this way. It doesn't mean just one side of that plant's getting contaminated. On the east side of that plant, where there is um, 340 acres that they want to sell to the community, has plutonium in it. This plant just doesn't care. So I've even got a document that says five miles from the plant, the pine needles have radioactivity in it. So the citizens found a lawsuit and Judge Carey in Columbus certified it. Then it sat in the, in the courts for 10 years. Now it's 15, <laughs> time goes by fast. And now it's sitting in Dayton court, and the judge there decided he's going to hear it, but he doesn't want to hear anything about radiation. They can't talk about the chemicals in that plant without talking about radiation, because when I was an electrician, I used trichloroethylene, and I worked in confined spaces with no protection equipment. When we got done cleaning down uranium, plutonium, technesium-99, uh, Neptunium, PCB oil, when we got through with all this stuff, we dumped it down the drains. And where did it go? It went to, to that creek. It went to the Cider River, to the Ohio River, to the Mississippi. So we're all affected. That plant's 100 miles from here. But there's been documents that I've seen in some of the plants that it travels so far. So, you know, we are killing our future generation. And it's really sad when you go down. I've seen babies that were born like children at Chernobyl. By the way, I was in Russia. I was there for two weeks. And uh, I met some of the victims of Chernobyl. And they made me an honorary member of the victims of Chernobyl. And it was quite an honor. Uh, maybe somebody else would like to talk. So um, the uranium enrichment facility in Portsmouth, uh, it fits into a larger picture of the whole nuclear power situation. We have 104 nuclear plants in the United States. 
they all operate on enriched uranium, and the way uranium is enriched, first it's taken out of the ground, it's mined, and it's called yellow cake when it comes up, and it's just basically uranium ore, and they grind it, and I'm doing this, I'm telling you this because there's a myth that's perpetrated by the nuclear power industry that nuclear power doesn't affect global warming. Now it's a power horseshit, basically. It's a big lie. I'm going to tell you exactly why in terms of the fuel chain and where Portsmouth fits in. They have to, obviously they have to make fuel for a nuclear power plant. The first thing they do is they mine uranium. In the United States, most of the uranium has been mined on Indian land, Native American land. They've used Native Americans to go into these mines. When they're in the mines, they breathe radon gas, which comes off from the uranium. It causes, it goes into the lungs and causes lung cancer because it emits alpha particles, which are large, very deadly particles of radiation. The cancer rate among uranium miners in the Navajo and Hopi tribes and the other tribes of the West is astronomical. We've known this for decades. These people have been dying en masse for a long, long time. So they get the uranium ore out of the mines, and then they take it and they mill it. They turn the ore basically into sand. And these sands, when they come out of the plant, are called tailings. And in Colorado and in New Mexico, and there are literally billions of tons of uranium tailings. These tailings emit large quantities of radon gas into the atmosphere, and they go all over the world. And they are sitting there, these tailings piles, they're enormous tailings piles, forever. They're extremely radioactive, and they even let kids play on them, even though they're radioactive, and they're, of course, mostly on Indian land. Then, when they, they take the sand, and they treat it with very, very toxic chemicals, including high, uh, uh, sulfuric acid and other acids, and they put, when they get done with it, they wind up with very large ponds of extremely acid liquid. You cannot, they call it liquor, you cannot swim in these ponds. You put your foot in this pond, you will retract with the lack of a foot, basically, if it's that toxic. And there are lots and lots of chemicals there that you don't even want to hear about. So they take what they've treated, which is called yellow cake, and they bring it to a place like Portsmouth. There were at one time three large enrichment plants in the United States. Portsmouth, Oak Ridge, and Paducah. Paducah, Kentucky, and Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Paducah is still open. Oak Ridge and Portsmouth, thankfully, are shut. But not, we're not sure if they're actually shut. We think they're still doing enrichment there. And there's a whole lot of, you know, uh, secrecy about what they're doing there. On the one hand, they're talking about closing it forever. On the other hand, they're talking about opening it up. And this is one of the reasons why it's so important to stop the building of new nuclear plants. Because if they start building new nuclear plants, they're gonna come back to Portsmouth, fire up that goddamn thing, and we're gonna have more victims with more stories to tell about, uh, like Owen Thompson and these poor children, um, and Vina about the, the radiation damage that the government will never get to. So at Portsmouth, Paducah, and Oak Ridge, the uranium is enriched. It's a very, very intensive process in terms of the electricity that's consumed. And in fact, the enrichment process in the United States consumes as much electricity as the city of Cleveland. It's an enormous uh, sink. And these, these plants, these enrichment plants, have been powered by coal-fired generators. So when they say that the nuclear power plants don't emit uh, any, any greenhouse gases, they completely omit the mention of the enrichment process, which emits huge quantities of, of greenhouse gases. And then, of course, they t the, the fuel comes down into little pellets, and they take them to the nuclear plants like Perry and Davis Bessie, and they operate the reactors. And so, at this point, hey guys, at this point, the um, uh, Portsmouth plant is right smack in the middle of the whole debate about whether they're going to build new nuclear plants. And if they do build new nuclear plants, well, like I say, we're going to have more victims. So, Vina, uh, can you tell us, you were harmed in the plant, and can you tell us the story of how you were harmed and what you've gone through? Uh, we have about 10 more, 10 or 15 more minutes, okay?
also mention about the centrifuge. We're getting ready to start up the American centrifuge at the piping plant. We don't want it, any in Iran that we're going to do one pipe. It's already started in testing down there. And then we also, we, my experts from Russia came in and they found radium-226 in, in the crypts coming from the plant. Then he wasn't able to come back to finish his studies so Marvin Rezico, or Marzik, not Marvin Rezico, but Norm Busky came back and studied, to finish the study up and there is radium-226 coming from the crypt. If we have it, there's a possibility that we could be making many nukes. We don't know because they withhold everything from the plant. I have uranium-235 in my lungs. I've just been diagnosed with 55% uh, lung, less lung capacity, and I have an airway disease. Uh, uh, all the workers that I work with all have colon cancer, lung cancer. Most of them are all dying. I guess I'm, I can consider I'm pretty lucky, and I have chronic bronchitis. There's days that I can't get out of bed. There's days that I could uh, sleep for three months or my thyroid problems. Uh, I have so many problems I can't remember them all. Uh, I still feel a little lucky because I can still talk about that plan and what it's doing. But uh, the compensation bill is not a really good bill, but if you know anyone at all, contractors, anyone who worked at any of the new facilities in the whole world, have them to contact someone at the Energy Employees Compensation Act or contact me through that web page, nnwj.com, and we will direct you to where you have to go. Uh, the bill, they're paying $150,000 if, you if you're lucky enough to have one and the 21 cancers. Uh, Pikin is a special cohort. Pikin also doubled the Superfund list, but never was put in the Superfund list. So none of the workers, not even the community, no one knows that that is one of the second most, if not the worst, plan in the whole United States. And it's downplayed. We don't get no media coverage. Uh, the media stays away from us. Uh, if, a, if a reporter comes and gets a story out, and that reporter, he's guaranteed not to be there the next day to write another story. It, it's one of the most horrible stories in the whole world that you've ever heard, if you ever get to hear it. The Dayton Daily News did come and do a big story. And uh, I tried to get some of the copies of the paper, and they said they've all disappeared. Some, someone destroyed them, but I think you can get, them on, get it online. I just brain tumor, uh, colon cancer, and the government, the government gave one of my co-workers 20% because he got colon cancer for his impairment rate. Uh, it's a pretty sad story. If you know anyone who's sick, any relatives, contractors, anyone, please get a contact and get your name on the, the list. Okay, do you any have questions? We have seven minutes left. Anybody have questions? Yes, come up, because uh, nobody will be able to do it. What's, that? What's the website again, Terry? NNWJ.com. What's that stand for? National Nuclear Workers for Justice. And I want to let you know our website got hacked three times last month. We had a uh, memorial for the workers. We're trying to get the government to recognize the dead workers that have died in the plant. Not only of Python, but nationally, because you know they forget about these workers that are dying and they continue to want to put more nuclear stuff in Python. They don't care about the workers because that was in the past, and they said we're going to do better tomorrow. I'm telling you now, there is no cleaner, safe nuclear energy. I don't care what they tell you, it's not safe, no way. They say we learned our lessons from the past, they not learned anything. That's one thing, you know, they talk about Three Mile Island and Chernobyl, we've seen Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. What you don't see is all the, the death and destruction that occurs on the way to Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. People die, even before a nuclear plant has an accident. People die in the mines, people die in the enrichment facilities, and then in the transportation of the fuel. And then of course at the other end, we have no idea what to do with the nuclear waste. So this is a, a key piece of the puzzle. Does anyone else have a question? Yes. This lady is from Lucasville, which is nearby. You can join our organization. Uh, are you still living down there? Or okay, well, what, you have a better computer. Well, the point 
is that people, these good people have had an impact. It's a much different situation down there than it would have been had Vina and Terry and so many other people not got active. Uh, are there hearings coming up, or is there any proposed legislation or opposition to proposed legislation that people can, can in Columbus, you know, where the state capital is, if that's anything coming up there, that they can attend hearings or something?